Hi everyone, I'm Rincey and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. So over on the Book Riot back channels there was this conversation happening about sort of book hangovers. There was someone who writes for Book Riot who had just finished The Night Circus and she was talking about how she just had no idea what to do after reading that book because she was just so overwhelmed by how wonderful it was and she just didn't know like what to pick up next or where to go next because nothing was really going to live up to what the night circus was for her which I definitely think is an experience that everyone sort of goes through at a certain point in their reading life. You read this wonderful, amazing book that really just takes over your mind in this almost magical way. And then once you're done with it, you're forced to leave the world and you are just like, I have no idea what I'm going to do next. I've heard this referred to as a book hangover, which is obviously different than a reading slump, but sometimes a book hangover can lead into a reading slump. So today I'm just going to give you guys some tips of what to do when you are getting over a book hangover. So the first tip that I have for you guys is to give yourself a little bit of space. I think a lot of times, especially as people who are very heavy readers, we go from one book right into the next book and we don't really take that long of a break between books. But I think that when you're getting over a book hangover, it's nice to just give yourself a little bit of a breather before your next book because in the end nothing is really going to compare to the experience that you just had. These book hangovers don't happen very often because you don't come across books like this all the time and so I think that after you have an experience like this you sort of just need to give your brain and your imagination and your heart even sometimes a little bit of time to recover before moving on to the next book so don't feel bad about taking a day or a couple of days or a week off between this book and the next book that you end up picking up. The second tip that I have for you guys is do not pick up a read-alike for this book, at least not yet. I think a lot of times when we read a book like this we were like, oh man, I totally am in love with this writing style or this world or this genre and so I'm going to pick up another book that is described as if you like X book you're gonna like Y book because in the end Y book is never going to live up to what X book was for you. Every book is so unique that if you pick up a book like what you had just read, you are just going to spend the whole time comparing those two books to each other and you're just going to be disappointed in the end and you might even just be put off from those books in general when at another time you might have enjoyed it a lot more. So if you are like this book writer who liked The Night Circus, don't pick up another book that's recommended for people who like The Night Circus, at least not yet. Give yourself some time before you go for that book again because Again, you're just going to be comparing and it is not going to turn out well. The third recommendation that I have for you guys is along similar lines as that is to pick up a book that is preferably in as far opposite of the exact same like genre that you have just read. If you had just fallen in love with this really amazing fantasy book, maybe go for some nonfiction next or pick up a graphic novel or pick up young adult. If you had just read a really great young adult book, maybe pick up a mystery book. The great thing about books is that there's so many options out there and very rarely do people just read like one kind of book. Even if you're someone who really only reads fantasy, there are subgenres in all of these sort of larger umbrellas so that way you don't have to be reading basically the same thing over and over again. Again, this has a lot to do with the whole comparing aspect of it. Going to something completely different will help sort of allow your brain to adjust to something differently so that way when you are ready to go back into fantasy you won't be comparing it again to what you had just read and loved. The fourth and final tip that I have for you guys is something that you'll need to do a little bit down the line and that is to figure out what it was about this book that you love so much so that way when you are ready to pick up a read-alike, you pick up a read-alike that's similar for the right reasons. One of the big ones that's out there is people are always looking for read-alikes for Harry Potter, but people like Harry Potter for very different reasons and there are a lot of books out there that claim to be the next Harry Potter, which is not really true for all of them or any of them in my opinion, but there are reasons why you liked Harry Potter and you need to figure out what those reasons are so that way when you go to pick up another book you're looking for something similar to that. Did you like Harry Potter because of the magical elements because then you want to go into a more fantasy route or did you like Harry Potter because of the characters that it built and then you want to look for something that's more complex in character as opposed to maybe something more magical. When you read Gone Girl, did you like it because it was a thriller, a psychological thriller? Or did you like it because there was this crazy female lead character? Or did you like it because there was a major twist in it? Because there's a lot of books out there that are comped as being the next Gone Girl, but they really aren't. They just have like one aspect of what made Gone Girl really great. So I think it's really important that when you are picking up some sort of read-alike that you, again, just really 
think about what it was about that original that you really really love and see if those things are similarly describing the book that you're about to pick up. There are obviously plenty of sources out there for reviews so check Goodreads, check Amazon, check YouTube, check Book Riot to see how people are talking about the book and see if it is described in a similar manner to that book that you had just gotten over. So yeah, those are just some tips to help you guys get over a book hangover after finishing a really great book. If you have any tips of your own, feel free to leave a comment down below. We can all use advice in this area because there are definitely situations where all of us just really really love a book and it seems like we're never going to love a book as much as we just did. We just have to approach them in the right way so that way we don't have like too high expectations or be expecting something of that book that it isn't really going to deliver. So yeah, that's all I have for this week and I will see you guys next week. Bye.